SCP-2940 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures, Observation Post 43 has been established on the coast of Aokigahara, with the appearance and functionality of a suicide watch post 1. Communication systems are to be provided for instances of SCP-2940-A on floor 1, to transmit requests or distress calls of possible SCP-2940-B containment breaches, revised procedures, as of January 4, 2015, communication with all instances of SCP-2940-A is to be withdrawn. Instances are to be subdued in the case of further resistance. Preventing access to lower levels of SCP-2940 for instances of SCP-2940-A has been deemed unnecessary, however, increased security measures around the perimeter of SCP-2940 are currently under consideration due to concern with SCP-2940-B self-containment TTT, description, SCP-2940 is an extensive underground bunker located in Aokigahara, a forest near the base of Mount Fuji. It is constructed mainly with concrete and steel, and extends 9 meters underground. Several structural similarities to German industrial bunkers from World War II are present, though most rooms have been converted into living quarters. Uninhabited rooms in SCP-2940 exhibit considerable disrepair, though all rooms inhabited by instances of SCP-2940-A are generally clean and fit for living, SCP-2940 has 10 floors, each floor containing 5 residences consisting of families of 3 to 5, referred to as SCP-2940-A, groups A through E. All residences include a bathroom, living room, and a small kitchen, with furniture consistent with those present in America in the early 1970s. Prepared food and water is transported to each residence by means of redacted. This is similar to biological tissues from the small intestines, but otherwise remains partly mechanical. Waste material is removed by means of the same process, a total of 23 instances of SCP-2940-A exist within SCP-2940, consisting of various humans of age and ethnicity. Instances of SCP-2940-A are unable to exit SCP-2940 and develop variable physical abnormalities following death, though autonomy and teleportation within all residences are the most commonly observed properties, the entrance to SCP-2940 is accessible through a stairwell next to each floor's medical bay. However, all instances claim that no such stairwell exists. Instances are also unable to be forced through the doorway leading to the stairwell, and are obstructed by an unseen presence they claim to be the structure's walls. Despite their environment, all instances demonstrate extremely welcoming and hospitable personalities towards personnel, often inviting them to join meals. SCP-2940-A and SCP-2940-B occupy floors 1 through 9 of SCP-2940, due to the effect of a temporal anomaly. Each floor has a set of unique instances of SCP-2940-A and B from a different period of time. Testing during containment has shown that time does not actively pass within any floor of SCP-2940, excluding floor 10. Time measuring devices are inoperative, though local space-time allows movement and the continual habitation of all entities within SCP-2940. However, beginning at floor 1, each subsequent floor appears to have experienced the passage of 46 days in time from the previous floor, for example, a watch left within floor 1 can be found in floor 3, which will have measured the passage of 92 days, despite appearing inoperative. The effects of this on all denizens of SCP-2940 is currently unknown, no attempts to extract or prevent the death of all instances of SCP-2940 have been made due to the possibility of unforeseen consequences. Floor 10 of SCP-2940 is not affected by any time dilating properties. See Addendum 2940-LB4. SCP-2940-B is a human cadaver that progressively gains autonomy and hostility towards all living organisms, correlating to the depth of the floor it inhabits within SCP-2940. It contains several components from the skeletal system of the Falco Rustigolus, known as Jerbalkin, 
the cranium has been replaced with a fleshless skull, and both arms have wings extending from the humerus. The plumage of both wings are also identifiable as that of Falco rustigolus. SCP-2940B skull is capable of high amounts of luminescence and incandescence, SCP-2940B in floor 3, numerous lacerations are present in SCP-2940B's epidermis, which dispense a black, viscous substance. SCP-2940 attacks all organisms within eyesight, and appears to lack other sensory systems. SCP-2940-B dispatches each subject by seizing them and bringing them near its skull, which increases in temperature to above 750 Celsius, causing third-degree burns to develop on the subject's upper body. Additionally, four separate events also document SCP-2940-B's usage of its beak to pierce vital areas, following the infliction of fatal wounds. 70% of subjects will immediately degenerate into 12 liters of the same substance expelled by SCP-2940-B. Following the extermination of all living organisms within range of SCP-2940-B, it will proceed to consume any remaining substance, by collecting it with its hands to pour directly into its throat. The following is information noted by Mobile Task Force Row 2, Urban Spelunkers, during exploration efforts. Surveillance was constructed within a four-member residence of SCP-2940-8, Group E, consisting of a couple in their 30s and their daughter and son. MTF Road 2 directly observed SCP-2940-B behavior, and retrieved recorded footage of SCP-2940-A through usage of 2D class personnel, floor hashtag, SCP-2940-B activity, SCP-2940-A, Group E, activity, 1. Shallow breathing is audible from SCP-2940-B. No movement or reaction to auditory or tactile stimuli, Group E is in healthy condition, no hostility towards personnel reported. 3. SCP-2940-B is capable of bipedal locomotion, and emits a faint white glow. Walks in a consistent loop past all resonances, does not attack, all families are still cordial, though complaints about food quality and availability are made occasionally. 5. Masculine weeping is heard from SCP-2940-B light from its skull is equivalent to that of fluorescent household lighting, and is incapable of causing fatal damage through burns. First recorded acts of aggression, incapacitating a child from Group A, father of Group E is missing. Son and daughter repeatedly express discomfort and nausea. Mother expresses confidence in the return of father from seeking assistance from neighbors. 7. SCP-2940-B repeatedly verbalizes two words, Salix and Willow. Noticeable gain in speed. Seven instances of SCP-2940-A are killed after exiting their residences for various reasons, mainly relating to safety from other instances. Brother is now missing from Group E. Living room is in noticeable disarray. Sister can be heard retching and dry heaving within the bathroom for approximately 20 minutes before remaining silent. 8. SCP-2940-B immediately attacks all individuals that enter the hallway leading to all residences, and expels its epidermal substance at victims to immediately impair movement. A minimum of 10 instances of SCP-2940-A have been confirmed dead, surveillance system appears to have been tampered with. Brother and mother instance of SCP-2940-A instances address the camera, inquiring for possible dinner recipes. Both instances appear dead, and are splayed against the walls from an unknown force. Black liquid appears to have flooded the entirety of the floor within the residence, appearing to originate from the bathroom. 9. Floor is unable to be accessed, due to SCP-2940-B's constant pummeling on the doorway. Light from SCP-2940-B is extremely bright, and causes vision impairment when directly observed in the doorway's crevices, unknown. Surveillance systems have been disabled, presumably personnel conducting previous exploration claim hearing several feminine voices over SCP-2940-B's shrieking, surveillance still in 7th floor living quarters of SCP-2940-A, Group D, Addendum 2940-LB4, 
Floor 10 contains several apparatus responsible for supplying SCP-2940A instances with basic necessities. All appear to be functioning, despite the living conditions that instances of SCP-2940A experience in lower floors. A single cubicle containing a computer terminal, filing cabinets, and several documents are present in a separate room. Besides assorted forms on living conditions and maintenance, several personal observations were found scattered throughout the documents, 1.03-33-2, they told me that doing only work wouldn't be optimal for this place, so, yeah. All five families, including Matt's, are fine. We're gonna be down here for a while, considering the amount of work we've seen the laborers and hawkers dealing with above. The historical implants should keep everyone from panicking, for at least a month I don't know. Communication back to headquarters has been smooth. Good to know my family's being cared for. It's all I needed, 1.21-33-2, bit of an issue regarding the water supply. Something's tainted it, but readings say that it's fine. It smells rancid, it's grey, and lukewarm. I went up and told the families not to drink it, didn't tell them that it was already used to prepare the food. Nothing to do about it, I'm sure the counter halogens will counteract it. Might be something the specific water solution does. Medical station is only meant to hold bodies, I can't send people there, 1.22-33-2, big trouble. It was a lot bigger than the normal earthquakes, and it was going though the entire bunker. My terminal blinked out, so much for latest model, Tektronix needs work, and now I can't message back to HQ. I checked up on the families, they're fine and welcoming as when I gave them the stuff, but I think they know something's up. Only thing I can do is stay put and wait. Didn't get any other instructions, date not found, $3 and $0.89 slash 3% hashtag terminal spewing bullshit. Integrity W slash macrocosm origin 2 severed, now in dash slash neos. What am I supposed to make out of this? Manuals down here don't say jack. I can't go up there to look at Matt and his kids, I don't want to know what they think. But they don't think so I have to, reset at 0.01 slash 00 colon 1, the stairwell. It's gotten bigger. There's still two floors, but I watched it. I watched it stretch in front of me. It was like watching putty melt away from the ground, and it was glowing blue hot. I went and manually locked all homes from the outside. The water must have done something to the implants, but at least they're all breathing. I have my own separate station for supplies, but I swear it's just because I'm the only one that HQ needs alive. When Light Courier Enterprises has priorities, they stick to them, sick fucks. 0.02 slash 0 colon 01, check the water again. It wasn't gray anymore, but I definitely saw a bone down there. Suited up and got it, but it, melted, when I pulled it out. The whole tank sealed, don't know how that happened. Also went up again, but I can't unlock some of the rooms. I was able to talk to that boy from the Abelson family said he can't understand what his family is doing in the back, halfway through he just stopped and stared at me. There was black stuff coming from below their bathroom door, and I heard what I think used to be his mom. I ran, and he was laughing at me, 0.03-0-01, they said it was for the worst events, but I'm going to leave everyone down here. If I at least bring the necessary forms, they'll relocate me so no one has to know it was me, 0.04-00-1, door to stairs has auto locked from inside. Means that I've lost everyone, if this is coming through to anyone with the status transmissions, tell my family that they don't need me or LCE. Leave for somewhere else any of the splinter groups, they're going to make Michael start working in a month, he's only 13. 0.07-00-1, terminal says area integrity jammer shattered. Booklet doesn't say anything. Hoping for an extraction. Best of luck to all other employees, 
my door opened, and I hear singing. We'll go up to check on the light messenger, the true courier of light, he's here. Ananias, are you calling me? Extraction isn't needed, I'm filled with energy. I'm coming up to see you now, addendum 2940 LC5, a large bronze plaque is found mounted within each residence of SCP-2940, engraved with the following two, Light Courier Enterprises, Hideaway Home, Welcome to your new home, your protective shelter from the world above. We will be sure to accommodate you with all the materials you need to sustain the rest of your unnatural life. There is no need to fear the entering of any unknown entities, as the entrance of your neighborhood of five will be fully strengthened and completely non-existent. Panic is a large factor in the breakdown of humans, and may cause certain individuals to attempt escape from safety, so there will be nothing to worry about without entry or exit to begin with. Also, please be sure to observe the designated food and water storage, energy holding, and medical morning rooms. The stairwell is prohibited from access, as the employee provided with your home has been trained to deal with extremely sensitive tasks in the basement floor. All residents are fully expected to castigate and chastise any individual attempting to enter below, and all words they speak must be disregarded. Immediately submit them to any available sect of the medical morning room, and allow growth to occur. Grief is permitted upon completion of the transaction, the events that have occurred may seem frightening, but Light Courier Enterprises is dedicated to the protection of all clients and customers. There is no place to fear. Only hope, and hope alone, will be the steed for all those undergoing this change. Onward, through and towards the dark abyss that lies before us, we shanty slow for home. Onward, through the being and entity of energy that beset our world, bringing chaos into our lives. Onward, the future was in sight, we will return it here. Onward. Onward. Onward, Light Courier Enterprises is not liable. Contact 9915303214 when communication services are made available again. Any foreign products, mutations, or entities that appear within Hideaway Home are not products of Hideaway Home or its assigned employee. We didn't ask for this. Hideaway Homes Forever Food and Love Hydrating Resources Expire 3.09-33-2 No assistance is currently possible, footnotes, 1. Aoki Kahara is a popular location for suicides, due to various myths and its isolation. Tokyo, Bunjai Shunju. 2009 ISBN 978-4167697235, 2. For original documentation on Group of Interest Light Courier Enterprises, see SCP-1940, SCP-1920, and SCP-1740. First noted documentation of LCE can be obtained from SCP-2395.